Uh, salutations, respective viewers. Uh, this is George from Ireland. This video is a further analysis of uh, Stephen Crowder's uh, contention that the Nazis were um, socialists and liberals, which is an even more astonishing uh, accusation. So you may know uh, Stephen Crowder. He's a Canadian-American shock jock who lives in Texas, and he peddles uh, uh, ultra-conservative uh, myths most of the time. Some of what he said is on the money. Sometimes I agree with him about, uh, you know, um, extreme feminists or whoever. Um, some of the, some far left people are intolerant. So Mr. Crowder appears to know very little about uh, German history. Now, for most people, Nazism is, uh, is evil incarnate. Um, and as it's so universally reviled, people whose uh, politics is playground level name calling, like to use Nazism to score points off the other saying, you're like this, you're like that. It's well known there's this reductio ad Hitlerum. The sooner that an analogy to Hitler is drawn, the uh, more uh, infantile the discourse. So liberal, well, wh what is a liberal? Obviously relates to liberty and all that. Better be free, generous. I mean, almost everyone claims they're in favor of freedom. So liberals would, would generally say they want small government. Certainly they, they would value a few things. Well, the palladium of liberalism would be free media, fair trials, um, fair elections, things like that, human rights. Now, I know liberalism has become a one-word oxymoron for some um, in, uh, in the Western world. Uh, the, the liberal left is sometimes intolerant and actually restricts freedom of expression, and that is that's detestable. And Stephen Crowder's on the money when he rails against that. Liberals tend to be anti-militarists. They would uh, favour secularism, personal autonomy. So classical liberalism shades into mainstream conservatism, libertarianism, and so on. So the thing about these uh, political ideologies is they're not discrete. They overlap. Anyway, it was astonishing to hear Stephen Crowder say that the United States is on a democracy because it's the boast of virtually every American politician, Republican and Democrat alike, that the United States is this model democracy and should export its uh, wonderful system of government worldwide. Everybody should want to emulate them. And if you don't, there's something very, very wrong with you. You must be either grossly immoral, moronic, or goodness knows what else. Um, and they often gratingly assert the uh, innate superiority of uh, their constitution. But in a sense, uh, Mr. Crowder was on the money because the United States, well, it's, it's the Constitution and Declaration of Independence don't wor mention the word uh, democracy or any of its derivatives once throughout those uh, documents. And if it was so crucial to America, if it was in the country's DNA, you'd think it would pepper these two uh, sacred foundational documents of the United States. And he said that the Founding Fathers did not want the United States to be um, a representative democracy. Well, you can say that again, um, because they wanted only uh, wealthy uh, white males like themselves to have the right to vote. So he says this was to protect a minority. Well, it was in a sense. It was to protect themselves. It was to protect the affluent. Um, however, it was, it was still a somewhat representative system. It was closer to being representative than what had gone before. It was uh, more representative than what prevailed in Great Britain at the time, or indeed where we were in Ireland. Um, so uh, he said, oh, democracy is mob rule. That depends if the majority are bad. Obviously, m mob is a pejorative term for the, the multitude. So Crowder's got obviously no faith in his uh, fellow Americans. He despises them. Um, but it could be the minority who are a mob. If they are malevolent and they're inclined and abusing the majority, that, that could be the mob. Um, so how do you know that the minor minority is going to guarantee the rights of the majority? It seems to be placing a strange faith in the minority, whoever they happen to be. Um, majority rule is necessarily bad, according to him. Well, that is staggering. I thought the democracy is about majority wins. Obviously, there are certain things the minority, sorry, the majority can't do, but they did, like um, slavery. Might have heard of that one. Obviously, women weren't allowed to vote to 1919, but uh, uh, even when all white men had the right to vote, obviously, they're largely depriving African Americans of their rights, particularly in the Deep South. So um, you throw around the word democracy as though it's noble. Yeah, they do. And Republicans do as much as Democrats. Uh, it's incredible, he says, it's not, uh, the United States is not democratic. Now, um, the United States is not absolutely representative. It's true because, obviously, in, in, in the Senate, there are two senators per state, no matter how small the population. Wyoming, with 300,000 people, has the same representation as California with almost 60 million because there's a union of states. And if you don't like it as a state, I suppose you could try to secede. 
to make sure the rights of the minority are protected from the majority. Well, that's a noble sentiment so far as it goes. But really, what he's saying is that the billionaires shouldn't have to share a tiny fraction of their wealth with those who are in dire need. He talks about the left-wing ideology. It lends itself to authoritarianism. Well, it can do. There have been plenty of right-wing authoritarian governments. You've seen there are lots of been right-wing uh, dictatorships around the world, military ones, particularly in Latin America. And as an American, he might know something about that because the CIA engineered lots of military coups, bringing to uh, office these sort of governments which had no respect for free media, fair trials, habeas corpus, anything like that, grossly abused people, and they certainly weren't socialist. So the idea that capitalism can't lead to dictatorship is for the birds. It's nonsensical. It's historically illiterate. So anyway, th this is how he rails against uh, national socialism. Big education. He promised uh, un um, employment for all, increased benefits, increased jobs by increasing the state. Big education, free daycare, free school, nationalized health care, 80% tax. Well, I could go through those one by one. I don't think there really was big education. Now, they all got to go to school. That's true. They could leave school in their mid-teens, and they often did. Very few university places, uh, often not state-funded. Um, they weren't handing out PhDs for a while at the beginning. I'm sure Crowder would approve of that because he's anti-intellectual. Um, what else? Burning books? Uh, that, that's not exactly freedom of expression. Um, so that's really the antithesis of liberalism. He promised uh, employment for all. Well, he didn't actually guarantee people employment, and there was an employment right up until 1939. So, no, that's a, a falsehood you're peddling there. Increased benefits. Well, it's true that pensioners got free winter fuel, but increase anything else? Unemployment benefit? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, is he just making all this stuff up? He doesn't cite any sources. Increased jobs. Well, it's true that more people did, did get more jobs, and they did expand the state. So when he says... Nazism was socialism. The Nazis certainly indulged in socialist rhetoric, and there were a few policies that were socialist. There were many that were capitalist. Come on more onto the capitalist side later. Big education. I really don't see it. There was obviously Nazi indoctrination in schools, but often teachers complained about how educational standards plummeted because of the overemphasis on um, PE, for instance, and uh, having only people, people who are loyal Nazis being promoted in schools over those who were effective teachers. And... Um, discouraging the Socratic method and uh, uh, free debate. Academic freedom was at an end, and obviously history was all about brainwashing. Uh, very narrow-minded, nationalistic brainwashing. Kind of the thing that Stephen Crowder would like about uh, selecting to flatter about one's own history. Um, incidentally, I'm not suggesting that Stephen Crowder was a Nazi. Free daycare. I don't know if they did that. I could be wrong. Free school. Well, they already had free school prior to that. Um, nationalized health care. Uh, again, I'm not sure that's true, actually. 80% um, tax, well, indeed, that might be true. Um, but, you know, the United Kingdom had that in the 70s. It was, it wasn't a communist country. Was it a socialist country? Well, the Labour Party might have called itself socialist back then. Amer what America's dearest ally. If America can be a close ally with countries of the socialist government, surely it can't be so anti-American. He mentioned none of these things are right-wing or libertarian, the things he mentioned before. Um, hmm. Well, uh, let me see. I mean, the, the political indoctrination in schools could be, and the Nazis were not classically right-wing. Uh, what else? Beefing up the military. Right-wingers tend to like that. So I, d I disagree with you there. Um, and uh, saying they were all for abortion. Well, libertarians would, would be for that, would be for personal autonomy. Barry Goldwater, for example, Republicans into the 80s, plenty of them were in favour of it. Christine Todd Whitman, even in the 80s, it's, it's, it's an individual's choice. So here I disagree, and actually the Nazis weren't pro-abortion, only for ethnic minorities, and they wanted to uh, wipe out. They were, in fact, pursued a very natalist policy, like a lot of the Christian right in the United States. A lot of Christian evangelicals want as many children as possible. So I don't think these people are Nazis, but it really is preposterous to suggest that uh, um, liberals and left-wingers in the United States are close to the Nazis. And by the way, most conservatives or uh, Republicans in the United States are, are, not, are not close to Nazis either. So don't bandy it about. Don't trivialise it by just insulting people like this. Come on, grow up. Uh, in, in a political forum, you've got to be serious and not just be trying to offend people by suggesting they're satanic. So he put on a silly German accent. This was misdirection to, to distract people away from the lack of substance to uh, his tirade. They use the 1% rhetoric a lot. Well, can you cite a single example of whether they use the 1% rhetoric? It's true the Jewish community was around 1% of the population, and that obviously they were anti-Semitic. 
now said, oh, partly because they're wealthy, but, you know, they, they've been against the boss class generally. So uh, the Nazis, they loathed liberalism um, and they didn't like the cinema, said it was an immoral influence, you know, polluting the purity of German culture, a bit like a lot of um, Christian fundamentalists in the United States would rail against Hollywood. Now, again, these Christian fundamentalists in, 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 in the United States, they're not Nazis. There might be a few tendencies that way, but, you know, they're not proposing genocide. Um, obviously, the Nazis were very anti-gay. Again, a, a lot of hardline right-wingers in the United States detest gays. Um, some of them would want to, wanted um, gays to be discriminated against until very recently. Um, so Hitler was bored by economics. So socialism is really based around economics, about helping uh, the poorest, about um, common ownership and so forth. There's a degree of common ownership in every society, including the United States. That's what national parks are about, the military and many public services. So what was at the core of Nazism? I suppose racism, uh, power politics, motivated by expansionism, militarism, because Nazism, uh, in some ways, it wasn't very principled and it was very opportunistic. So you can't really take them at their word. They had their 25-point party program in 1920 and, and some elements of that were socialist, some of it, were non, some of it was non-socialist. Why did so many people vote for the Nazis if they were so detestable? 1933, they scored 43% of the vote in a somewhat fair election, and they cheated fairly extensively. Um, well, partly because of this socialist rhetoric, they thought they would reduce unemployment and so on, but since about 1928, the Nazis had been in bed with the mainstream right. They formed the Habsburg Front for their draft law against the Young Plan. The German National People's Party, the German National Party, who would be proud to call themselves conservatives, they cooperated with the Nazis in this. So look at Stephen Crowder, look at his rhetoric. He demonizes Muslims, he wants Muslims to be locked up without trial forever in Guantanamo Bay. Um, you know, racial profiling for Muslims, even though they're not a race, because of ISIS, right? Now, the Nazis were so anti-Semitic, they said a lot of these Jewish revolutionaries, or terrorists you could call them, sorry, a lot of these communist revolutionaries are Jewish, and it's true that Jewish people were disproportionately involved in the communist movement. It'd absolutely be wrong to mistreat a single Jewish person because of that. But the, the Nazis went in for racial profiling because of this. Um, incidentally, obviously, there, were, there was a much longer trend of anti-Semitism in German history. It had been fairly dormant to the First World War, very much reawakened in the 1920s. So if anybody is there um, vilifying um, a religious minority, it's Stephen Crowder and those of his ilk, not the, not the liberal left in the United States. So the Nazis expanded the state military certainly, hugely. They certainly believed in strong defense, like the Republican Party in the United States. Now, strong defense doesn't have to be a bad thing. If it genuinely is defense, if it is an honorable and free system you're defending, okay, that's fine. But uh, don't pretend that liberals and left-wingers who want to cut defence spending to sensible levels bear any similarity to Nazis. Gun control, saying the Nazis were in favour of gun control. Well, that's largely bogus. If you were um, an ethnic German and uh, you were not a dissenter, then you could get a gun fine. The Nazis, in fact, wanted you to have guns as part of the general militarization of society. It was from communists and Jewish people had their guns confiscated. So what Crowder is again is saying is highly misleading. Um, so the Nazis certainly weren't in favor of church and state and they really liked school prayer. So they had a very cozy relationship with the Lutheran church and the Catholic church, the two major Christian denominations in, in, in Germany. It's true there were a handful of clergy who were gallant dissidents towards the end. Um, so the uh, remove power from the private sector, that's what he said. Like, well, this is bull because they had a very close relationship with many of the corporations and the corporations existed right to the end. The idea that the Nazis were liberal, that really is daft. It's nauseating that he should tell such flagrant lies. The Nazis did not believe in right to a fair trial, did not believe in free speech, did not believe in individual choice, autonomy, fair elections, any of the things that liberals hold sacred. So the Nazis, how did they manage to get into office when they only have had a minority in the Reichstag, that's the parliament? They're enablers with the DNVP and the DVP, the two mainstream right-wing parties. Indeed, Joachim von Ribbentrop, Hitler's foreign minister, was previously a member of the DNVP. Um, so they were in coalition with them and indeed the Centre Party, which, uh, which was a, an avowedly Christian party, the Christian right, you might call it, or they, they would say they were centrist. The vice, the vice Chancellor Franz von Papen was one of those. So um, it is willfully ignorant at best to say that the um, Nazis were socialist. They detested the communists. They, that was what they were meal. They were going to destroy communism. They went around with banners saying death to Marxism. 
Well, Crowder hates Marxism too. Doesn't make him a Nazi. But come on, it certainly doesn't make the Nazis communists. They were against the uh, Social Democrats. So the communists were banned. The SDP were banned as well. They were thrown in at concentration camps, things like that. The other parties had a fairly good working relationship with the Nazis. They voluntarily dissolved themselves over the next few months. The uh, president at the time, um, Paul von Hindenburg, was a reactionary, didn't belong to any political party. Hitler had stood for the presidency against von Hindenburg, against a traditionalist and against a communist. So uh, Mr. Crowder is peddling these falsehoods. Uh, and it really is uh, despicable that he should try to abuse history in this way for partisan gain. He shouldn't try and capitalize on the Holocaust for the sake of demonizing your political rivals. There are rational arguments to be made against your political opponents. And whilst, it true, whilst it's true there was a small element of, of socialism to Nazism, overall that wasn't the case. It's mainly ultra-nationalism, uh, expansionism, uh, the most vicious form of racism. So they allowed private enterprise to exist right to the end. They allowed the profit motive to exist right to the end. The idea that there were socialists is uh, largely bogus. And uh, please don't try to um, falsify the historical chronicles for the sake of making mileage in today's uh, partisan debates.